Adult Bible Studies. Uh, today our study is about the uh, Canaanite woman that approached Jesus and asked Him to uh, uh, heal her daughter. And uh, you'll see in the lesson today that uh, uh, at first Jesus uh, told her that basically He was sent to the uh, Israelites and uh, to to uh, take care of the lost sheep, so to speak. And uh, she came back at him and saying, well, uh, uh, I need help, you know. And, and uh, he came back again to her and basically said, uh, it's not good to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. You know, you think about that, and that's, you know, that's kind of amazing. Uh, he would tell her that, you know, you're taking the food that I'm going to give the Israelites uh, uh, away from them. But she said, Lord, even the dogs eat crumbs that fall from the Master's table. And this just amazed Jesus with her faith that He could do uh, uh, anything that, that she asked Him to do. And uh, He replied back to her, Woman, you have great faith. It will be just as you wish. And right then, her daughter was healed. Uh, over the last few weeks, Alan's been preaching uh, in our Acts Bible study and, and during the sermons we've seen several of these uh, 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 moments where people that weren't of the Jewish faith, uh, in two instances, Roman centurions, one comes uh, to Jesus and asks Him to heal His servants, you know, and, uh, and Jesus is, said, take me to the servant. He said, there's no need for that. You're a man of conviction like I am and uh, and that uh, I tell my soldiers to go and do and they go and do and that's what you do. And he looked at him and said basically the same thing he told the Canaanite woman, that you're a man of great faith and uh, your servant is healed. And then here recently in our Acts Bible study, we uh, read about another centurion, and but a different, person involved with Peter and he had just had his vision of the sheets coming down from the uh, heavens and uh, on these sheets were different animals and unclean animals in their, in their uh, 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 time and uh, it said kill and eat and Peter was just devastated and no I can't do this I've never done this before and uh, that's what Jesus told him or the Lord told him to do. And uh, so just after that, some emissaries from another centurion came to him and asked him to come and uh, uh, bless his household and to talk to him about this faith and this, uh, this Christ. And, uh, and Peter learned a great uh, 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 lesson about the Gentiles were also a part of this Christ kingdom and they needed to be addressed. And uh, that was the kick up in, the, in our lesson today. The Canaanite woman, uh, being a Gentile, uh, was not who Jesus was addressing at the time, but he was. We can't get hung up on that. It's just that he was focused, laser focused, on bringing the Word and, uh, and getting the people back to God as they had strayed away. Uh, we see in today's situation... Uh, uh, how the cry of hopelessness and frustration is involved all around the world today in our own community with this uh, COVID pandemic. And uh, we can easily get lost in, in all the things that could be done or said about the COVID thing. But the point of the matter is, it is, it is here and we're going to have to deal with it. And a great way of dealing with it is turn to God Use your faith. Don't get frustrated. Don't get a sense of hopelessness. Uh, lean on God. He wants you to lean on Him. In our lesson today, it explores the powerful story of the Canaanite woman whose faith allowed nothing to prevent her from going into Jesus' presence. Her great faith yielded great results. And I think that's really the whole key to this thing is faith. And we see uh, uh, many times, I'm reminded of the mustard seed. If you have 
the faith of the small mustard seed. You can move a mountain. Uh, uh, in Hebrews, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Uh, we see all of this stuff going on around us and we could easily get caught up into it. But we need to be smart. We need to turn to God. We need to pray. We need to stay focused. Don't get anxious. Do what you're supposed to do and things will turn out. It could be worse. As an 18-year-old in Vietnam, I can tell you it could be worse. This is nothing. Trust me, nothing. Uh, Will you get involved in combat? That will make you think a lot of things. That will test your faith. Tested my faith. I had to really work on that. I had to turn myself around and place my fears in God's hands. That's what we all need to do today in this time too. This is just another bump in the road. Uh, there's a lot of death. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of family disruptions. The, the terribleness of not being able to see somebody in the hospital knowing they're dying, the terribleness of not being able to be around them in those last moments, that can be just devastating. That's when we have to lean on the Lord. That's where we need to go and pray to Him. We need to let Him help us get through these trying times. Uh, in the lesson today, I made a point of looking at one thing here. God doesn't always respond to our problems in our time and the way we think the Lord should respond. But faith comforts and assures us of things hoped for and even provides the evidence of things not seen. It is the foreknowledge that God loves and promises to be with us in life's most uncertain times for those who might be at their wit's end. Hold on. We many times get involved in in and worrying and, and anxiousness. And it's just another form of sin in a way if you think about it. Uh, every area in our life is susceptible to sin's destruction. This is one other area. We can let this COVID virus uh, destroy us or we can meet this COVID virus head on, pray about it, say, in your prayers, I know I say, Lord, give the people that are able to address this situation the hands and the thought process to come up with whatever it takes to find a cure for this, uh, uh, find some way to protect not only us, this whole world. And uh, then you have to remember another thing about sin. Sin will corrupt every area of your life that it touches if you let it. Uh, we may not always agree with people for whatever reason. Boy, that's another whole story we've been going through with all the politics and yang yang going on and everything. But you know, you need to listen. One of the biggest things that, uh, that you can do for a situation uh, where you don't agree with someone, listen to them. Give them the time that they're wanting let them vent. Uh, taking the time to listen to another person's story is an expression of concern for them. They'll pick up on it, I guarantee you. Uh, they'll know that you actually do care for them in the situation they're in. It also allows a person to vent their feelings. <laughs> we all need to vent our feelings. It uh, gives us a lot more clearer perspective of what's going on around us. Uh, a lot of people don't stop and take quiet time and think and pray and go to the Lord with the problem and they're not able to deal with it because of that. They get lost in the anxiousness of the whole situation. This poor Canaanite woman could have easily said, well, he's not interested in me and walked away, but she didn't. She saw in him the Christ. She saw that he could heal her daughter and she was a bulldog. She didn't let go. She bit and held on. And Jesus saw this faith. That's what we all need to do today in this time. Uh, we need to be bulldog tough. We need to uh, 
bite into this and uh, get through it and quit letting it bother us as badly as we're letting it bother us. It's bad enough as it is. Don't give it anything else. Uh, when we uh, turn to God and uh, let Him be involved in, in, in what's going on, uh, it, it lets us let go of the disaster that struck us. Uh, we wonder sometimes, is God listening? Uh, he's listening. He already knew about it. That's the beauty of this situation. Uh, we, we aren't able to understand the length and the breadth of His love for us. He does care for us. Our faith in God assures us that in spite of how things might appear, our future is always hopeful. And we can always stand on heaven's eternal promises. Uh, I was going to go over a couple of things that I've been looking at. Uh, uh, God places obedience before domestic harmony. You know, we're seeing so much turmoil in the family situation, not only because of this COVID, because of the political stress going on, all this marching and rebellion, terrorism, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's no domestic harmony. You have people in families going against each other. Uh, it's not unlike uh, what Christ faced when He came on earth and He was ready to start His ministry. Think of what the devil did to Him. Think of the things that the devil offered Him. Think of the things the devil was going to make Him. He didn't listen a bit because he knew the devil was the devil. And that's really what we need to know today is the devil is the devil. He's not going away. He comes in many forms and shapes. But we have to fight him. We have to pray to God every day to help us fight the devil and his minions and their actions in our lives and those lives around us. You know, faith wins out both in our story today. Sorry about that. That was a gnat trying to get my mouth. Uh, faith wins out both in our story today and with Peter's trip to Cornelius and with this uh, Canaanite woman getting her daughter healed. You know, when you think about it, and I'll close with this, God's provision is sufficient.